Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to Let's Play Skyward Sword. I'm really, really sorry for this. Um, I did something really stupid. I recorded like eight or so parts and they all came out in complete silence. I don't know what exactly happened, but something happened with my microphone. Suffice to say, I should have been checking after I recorded each part to make sure the sound was working. I wasn't, and therefore I'm a bit of a retard. So, um, I'm recording these post-commentary right now, because I want to get them out. I really want to continue this thing. Don't want to just quit it. And so, uh, yeah, I'm really sorry about this, and I will do my absolute best to make sure this never happens again. Because I feel really stupid about it. So anyway... Uh, yeah, so we're gonna have no game sound or anything, just me talking. Isn't that fantastic? Okay, we got Fee here, explaining things. Fee is stricken with tutorialitis. Um, she's very annoying. This map amuses me, because it's like, who draws a map of the sky? It just looks weird. Uh, and she yells and yells and yells some more. Some of you may have noticed that the screen gets washed out sometimes. That only happens when it's a white color on the screen. And that just has to do with the cables that I use. That's not, not much I can do about that. So anyway, we are finally leaving the sky, and we are skydiving down to our next location. Looks fun. It's the entrance to the land of darkness. And splat, we're dead. Master Link, we've arrived. This is the fabled surface that has been long been part of Skyloft legend. By my calculations, you are currently positioned in a location known as the Sealed Grounds. And it looks awesome. This big mine or something, a big hole in the ground. And there it is. Color in the map with crayons, and we get the sealed grounds. And the map has to zoom in slowly, show me where the fuck I am. Please proceed with caution, Master. Anyway, moving around, take a look, see what's around, and we get some enemies, oh my god. These things were, um, you have to smack them in their mouth, which I took a while to figure out, because I'm kind of stupid. But see how his mouth is open horizontally? That means I had to swing horizontally, there we go. This guy's mouth is open vertically, so I had to swing vertically. Of course, Fee is flashing there and saying she wants to explain things to me, but I'm smart, and I can figure this out myself. Dumb bitch. And I got a green rupee, oh my god. So here we have cutscene number 50 billion. As we take a look at this big thing here. Ooh. Everything went dark. What was that? Wah! This is cool. What's happening here? <laughs> you know what it is? It's that thing! That thing is still kick-ass. Ah, my scar! Voldemort is thinking about me. Wah. Yeah, good luck with that, Link. A sword can totally kick that thing's ass. The hell was that? Am I on drugs?
Look at it, it's dancing. So anyway, um... Okay, I check out the door first. Obviously it's locked. I decided to cut down the torch because I'm cool that way. And there's some heart plants, yay. Which is actually, that's the name of a thing from Paper Mario I just realized, the heart plant. The things on Lava Lava Island. Anyway, at this point I decide to run all the way down this big thing, around and around and around. Now I don't know, I was wondering what the hell that was. I don't know if I could have just jumped down without hurting myself. I might have been able to. But instead I decided to run. Hey, it's good exercise. And otherwise, why would they put those fruits there? So yeah, this is a little, uh... I wanted to, uh, I wanted to find out what the fuck this was all about. And as I found out, there was absolutely nothing here! Yay! And then Link slid on his ass. So as we get closer and closer and closer to the thing at the bottom... <laughs> I just barely ran out of breath there. Yeah, sorry about this. I probably should have jumped, shouldn't I? I would have made it. He's Link, bitch. There, I jumped there. <laughs> Young one, child of destiny, descended from the sky. Raise the sword of the goddess skyward. Take aim at the evil aura and unleash its power. Well, gee, what am I supposed to do? I guess I'll do a skyward strike. And completely miss. And then I realized, oh, hey, I can Z-target. And I get rid of the... I stop this thing from smoking. Saved its lungs. And what did I do? I made geysers! How pretty. The air is now completely unbreathable. Master Link, I am sensing a change in the area that was triggered by your Skyward Strike. I have also detected an aura that correlates closely with your sailcloth. I surmise this aura belongs to Zelda. I can lead you in the direction of this aura through a process known as dousing. Would you like me to explain this process? And so I was like, sure, why not, because I didn't know how to do it. As you wish, dousing is when she detects the presence of something. You search for it using the tip of your sword. The near you are, the stronger the response will be. The response manifests itself through vibration and sound. Blah, 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 blah. I have a Zelda douse now. Hold down C and select Zelda, and you can search around for Zelda-like things. So I decided to try it out. So you can point around and look and see, oh, there's nothing here. And then you see, uh, oh, wait, oh, oh, there's something there. Which means that that's the direction I should be going. That's how that works. So, here we have uh, GB being an idiot number two, as he doesn't realize that he can use the geysers. But first of all, I get to this the thing where it was dousing, and there's nothing here. So I can only assume that I need bombs or something to get through there. Then I realize, hey, I can do this. Whee! It's kind of fun. Looking around, and uh, there's more dousing, and I think it, it was this point it was just pointing me towards the door. The door that was locked earlier, and not the rock wall, as I thought. So we go up. Get some more heart plants, because hearts are yummy. And 
check it out. The door has mysteriously unlocked itself. And I was like, yes, it was the door. I'm so smart. In the sealed temple, we found uh, another bird statue, a couple pots, and at this point I was I decided to try to roll the pot because someone told me at one point I could roll it, but then I triggered the cutscene and dropped it like an idiot. This guy has the best hat ever, and pendulum hair. Ah, the traveler descended from the clouds above. I welcome you, child of fate. Pendulum hair. Like, seriously. Tell me, what is your name? Link? Ah, Link. Good, very good. I sense you have already gained control over the sacred power that fills your point sword when pointed skyward. The skyward strike is yours to command. It is proof that you are fit to bear the blade you carry, the goddess sword. I have sat here for many years, waiting for you to arrive. All so that I could fulfill my purpose as your guide. You stand under the roof of the sealed temple, a place built by the goddess an eternity ago. Your arrival here was predestined many, many years ago. The spirit maiden you seek arrived here shortly before you, descending to this land in a shower of light. There's no doubting it. The gears of fate have begun to turn. Yet all is not as it should be. The spirit maiden was not meant to reach this land in the manner she did. I feel an evil power working in the shadows. It moves to warp the destiny of which you two are a part. Link, you are concerned for the Spirit Maiden and seek her whereabouts, yes? That is understandable, but for now you must focus on moving forward. That girl has her own purpose she must pursue, as do you. She set out for Farron Woods to discover the destiny for herself, and you must follow. Show me your map. Fine. The X upon your map marks the path that will lead to Farron Woods. You will be traveling in unfamiliar land. Many monsters have settled there, and a map will prove not prove guidance enough for your journey. And so I will give you the power to create beacons. And then I learn about beacons. When a beacon is marked on your map, a column of light will stand at that location, and it will act as your waypoint from afar. Point at the X and press C to place a beacon. So I did. Put a beacon there. But you cannot see it from where we are. A beacon stands outside to guide you. Leave the temple through the front doors and see for yourself. When you no longer have use for a beacon, you can remove it from your map using C. The beacons... Use your beacons well. Go now, you must head to Farron Woods and chase after the spirit maiden, the one you call Zelda. No. On your way out, take the contents of the treasure chest within this room. What you find there should prove useful to you in your journey. And pendulum hair magic. Seriously, that's just... That just baffles me. Pendulum hair. You are ready. Leave through the door before you and head into the woods. I wish you safe travel. Know that all the questions you have now will be answered in time. For now, Link, go bravely. So, there's the chest. I open it up and I find... Oh my god, a revitalizing potion. And a bottle, I think. I never checked. So anyway, I try rolling pots. There we go, I rolled a pot. Yay! Open the door. And we head out to the lands before us. In another cutscene. There's the beacon. It's showing the beacon. That will appear whenever I place a beacon on the map and it helps guide me around. It's quite useful actually. So I decided to run up the wall for no reason. Cut down some grass. Check out the little birds. Yes, getting rupees is very important. I need to buy shit later. I'd like that invincibility potion if I can. So as I move forward, I realize, whoa, there's a bunch of guys there. And I'm running out of time, so on the next thing, we'll fight these guys.